On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we're visiting with Brady Abrams. Brady is from central Kansas, but does a lot of his hunting on the western part of the state. Get ready to check out some whitetail and even mule deer. Let's go. What's up, guys? Welcome to Kansas. Come on in. My name's Brady. I'm an accountant by day and a diehard everything what you want deer hunter uh, whitetails by at all other times. So this is the kind of prelude, this is the garage. Uh, I got a few deadheads out here. I like to keep all the deads in the garage and then the kills and whatnot inside. So we can kind of just go through them real quick. Uh, got some hanging here. This is a super massive buck. I uh, found him down at my grandpa's in central Kansas. We hunted the place for a couple years and uh, had pictures of him each year. Just gnarly six and a half inch mass measurements. I mean, pretty crazy. Um, this deer right here, probably, but it's a tie between those two biggest deadheads we've found. I mean, the beams on this guy are, I think, pushing 28 inches. So he topped right at 170, I think. Um, hunted him hard out in western Kansas and found him dead two springs ago laying in the creek. So unfortunate, but cool to have him hanging up now. So this deer, nothing, nothing cool about it, really. Just some big brows. Found him dead. Was probably young. One of those things. Like I said, this might be the the biggest. Uh, he'd take the bacon for topping the inches off. Um, big 14-pointer. Found him four years ago, I think, out in western Kansas as well. So super unfortunate. Couple big sheds here in the middle. Oh, and then I got the Remember to Always Dream Big by Bill Winky. I love watching his stuff. Sad to see him retire or uh, step down, stop filming. But Jared and Mike and the guys are doing a great job keeping that going. These sheds right here. Not 100% certain it's a match, but uh, as you can see, certainly could be uh, both old. I mean, found them, though, half mile apart, actually a year apart, and uh, found this one out in the middle of a pasture, and then found this guy. Is that not a rib cage looking shed if I've ever seen one? Less than a half mile from him, from the road, too, so thought it was a carcass for sure, but cool set to have. Another big deadhead up here. Don't know what happened to him. A couple more big sheds, old sheds. I like to keep the old ones out here. This one was laying in a pond. Uh, Dad found it actually back uh, where they live. So it's a little, little discolored, but super, probably top 10, 75 inches. Top 10 in our collection. This is the biggest shed that we've ever found. Dad found this one as well, so I, I beat him quantity wise, but he's got a couple of the biggest ones. Uh, I rode on here years ago, 81 inches. Um, you can see the mice and rodents got to him, but just, I mean, I think this has got to be pushing 15 inches and yeah, just a, I'd have a heart attack if I saw him in the stand. So glad we have a shed instead. A um, couple more hunting decoration. I made the, I'm pretty proud of the collage up there. I made that in like junior high the wife makes fun of me but I told her I'm gonna keep it in the garage at least I mean pretty proud of myself shows how much I loved it back then and not much has changed in 15 years so head on side and we'll check out the rest so welcome to the basement this is uh where all the other animals are at we uh, moved here three years ago and uh, everything it was just unfinished concrete studs insulation and uh, I had a couple clothes to get it finished, didn't want to pay the twenty, thirty thousand, so I put up the wood, painted the ceiling, and put some carpet down and turned it into this, I think better than it ever would have. This guy, Western Kansas deer, shot him three years ago, I believe. Just a typical wide. They're all wide out there, it seems like. Some trash going on on his right side here, but that one scored about one fifty three, I believe. Uh moving over here, some cool sheds. These uh actually the the first set that my dog found got a red lab uh, so I was walking she stays pretty close but she was walking 20 feet to my left and she was kind of behind me she's always keeping up and I look look over at her and she's just kind of messing around with him got him in her mouth and I go, what what did you find Muzzy so it's crazy to think how many we'd walk we do walk past and that we uh, don't know about so thanks to her for those uh, the pheasant right here it's a pretty cool story. We were down at my grandpa's in central Kansas and uh, quail hunting. I mean, we knew there was some pheasants in the area, but 
we're actually walking back to the truck down a draw and uh he got up behind me and i mean it had to have been a 60 yard shot i probably put one bb in his head i mean knocked him cold walked walked up there couldn't believe it so i checked out his spurs i've been wanting to get one mounted and he he's probably a three-year-old bird so perfect perfect opportunity to do it there another good set right here this probably our well probably our number two this year out west uh he was three and a half last year so pretty cool to find his sheds he was on the pass list so hopefully that that story ends like you draw it up grow them big find their sheds and then shoot them at four or five and a half muley right here so this guy probably my favorite story well the coolest story at least uh 2012 it was i believe we were, i was in college and uh my dad bow hunts the same piece of property i do we've he's hunted it for 30 years so i've been hunting out there 15 years and uh he sh he shoots a big muley we, we were hunting a half mile apart um so he shoots a big muley text me says hey i got one got i hit one well he hit it smoked it double well he thought double lunged it. it's pouring out blood it gets back on the doe it's jason comes right back down around him 30 seconds later he drills it again this time it finally takes off running across the to the next creek and so he texts me he said all right let's 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 go look for it. it's got to be dead it's blood pumping out of it and uh the the funny thing about this is he's he shot it so he was taking his bow to go you know trail it and whatnot and i'm like dad it was pretty hot that day i'm not i'm not taking my bow i don't i don't need my bow to go look for your deer he's like son take your bow well you can see where this is headed we, we didn't end up finding his deer which is crazy and we have not found it to this day but this happened this he yells at my his buddy was actually with us his name's terry lives out there and uh we he yells at us saying hey guys there's a big muley come down the edge of the field and we get set up right by the fence row and sh if he didn't walk 10 15 yards in front of us and terry actually got a shot off first and the, so, probably hit the trigger when he was drawing or something the arrow just flew over his back but this thing stood there and looked at us and i just double lunged him he ran 50 yards down into the creek so he was upper 150s my biggest muley there's not many muleys left out there anymore where we hunt so never forget that one for sure pretty cool story uh another good one on this turkey this corner right here is full of the good stories uh it's actually a four four beard one two three four uh shot him junior year of high school it was actually prom morning so we, <laughs> we weren't even supposed to be out but we were because you know that's what we were thinking about that time of year is turkeys and uh there's turkeys all around us gobbling and whatnot and we had to be back by nine o'clock i think so they all flew down went silent we, we thought we were done well we seen this bird up in the just this one tree in the pasture up above a old barn and we, we thought it was a turkey vulture or something and so it was getting to be close time to go and this thing flies down and my buddy goes that that's a turkey like i was like yeah i think i see a red head so it's out there like 50 yards out in the field i'm like well i think i can, I can make that shot so i shoot and we were sure, pretty sure it was a turkey, but we weren't for sure. We the Jake, what well, you know, we weren't sure what it was. We walk up there, and you know, we were like, "Holy cow!" And you know, started counting the beards. So won't top that one ever either. So two of the biggest sheds down here, right here. This guy, I mean, he, it's got to be pushing five pounds. Probably the heaviest shed. I think it's seven total points. We had, we were hunting him hard one year. Um, I kicked him up one day walking to the stand. We actually have a shed over there. He's all busted up though, or his match. Never got a shot at him, but found his sheds. I don't know what ha happened to him the next year. Never saw him. This one right here, my dad, his pride and joy. We were just this past April or March, we were uh, out walking and he, he was getting all pissy. He said I was giving him the bad spots. I always drop him off because I walk so much faster than him. And uh, I was giving him all the bad spots. He said, so I said, okay, we got an hour left. Go drop me off. I'll walk till dark. Come pick me up. Go wherever you want. And he he comes back, still pouting, says he terrible day he's done shed hunting and i opened the passenger door to get in and this thing is just sitting there right away i knew what deer it was this is the deer we were hunting last year i mean he was probably pushing 180 he had five inch uh, g5 broke off right there just one of the biggest frame deer you'd ever see so he's still alive hopefully we can figure out what he looks like this year this is kind of my uh pheasant hunting corner over here i've got a couple pictures of my dog i started pheasant hunting pretty hard five years ago probably so had to get a dog of course and that's her uh got a nikon i like taking pictures and whatnot so that was her first year out actually she loved birds from the beginning so i got some cool uh canvases printed off of her this is actually my biggest whitetail he was 156 i believe shot him in 2014 which had been two years after the muley in college still didn't didn't have the money to you know some of these other mounts aren't quite as big but just did the did the euro on him so 
super nice buck. This one right here, this is last year, uh, November 6th. Killed him uh, on a permission piece 30 minutes from my house here. Just started knocking on some doors uh, in June, got permission, put up a stand, and didn't ever have him on camera or anything, but I'm falling in love with early November. I mean, he came through all by himself. The story gets better. He's coming down kind of a secondary trail, and I didn't, I, I didn't have a range on it, so I shoot and shoot right underneath him. And he takes a couple steps, and he actually gave me a better quartering away shot, so at that point I knew aim a little bit higher and I, I thought I drilled him on the second shot and I was kind of celebrating he takes off beeline and goes out of sight I was kind of celebrating and uh five minutes later I was I think I was texting my dad or trying to call him this buck comes walking back down the other side of the tree 10 yards away or I thought he was going to give me a chip shot uh 10 15 yards away and he kind of veers off and acts like he wants to hop the fence at this point I was like okay I missed him what the heck and wow, he's coming back. And so I shoot him again, double lung him. He barely gets across the fence, dies in sight. Uh, so not till after I recovered him and we're kind of walking out, I realized I'd hit him on that second shot at him, probably a little bit low, and he was bleeding like a stuck hog. And he, I'm sure he would have died, but thank God he came back by me and put, was able to put him down quicker. So this buck right here shot down at my grandpa's in central Kansas. Probably one of the, one of the only deer, well, the only deer I've ever shot that I rattled in. It was November 3rd, so he was kind of messing with another buck, chasing a doe up on a hedgerow. It acted like he was going to kind of come my way, but he started veering off, you know, nowhere near bow range. So he was probably 100, 150 yards. I, all I had was a rattling bag, and I hit the rattling bag, and he just, I don't even think he turned to look. He just turned beeline straight to the little food plot we had planted in front of us. And I had, I know I dropped the bag. Luckily, it stayed on the stand. Dropped it, had barely gotten drawn. I was at full drawn, and he was already stopped. Um... Luckily got a good shot at him, so that was a cool, cool way to call him in. Some more sheds here. This is my home office as well, so I have a pretty good view, I'd say. A couple of these sheds. This this one right here, down down at my grandpa's as well. It's another heavy one. I mean, can't even get my hands around it. Just super big base. Uh, never saw him the next year though. This one right here. Uh, well, Western Kansas actually this past, well, it have been this past summer, we nicknamed this deer Polaris. Uh, we were riding the four-wheeler, the Polaris actually putting up cameras and stands and it was laying right on the edge of a cornfield. I mean, holy cow, like that it's a huge deer. He's going to be even bigger next year if he keeps that brow. And uh, he did. He was in the 70s this, this past fall and uh, we went out opening weekend to bow hunt and my buddy got a shot at him, gut shot him and we never found him we we didn't find him dead we haven't found him back on camera i mean that's the only gut shot deer i've never had the end of a story to so disappointing there but yeah really nice buck uh this is probably the biggest shed uh down in the basement um and it's got a pretty cool story too it was an old shed and i've colored it up a little bit try to make it look a bit cooler uh western kansas um found it in the farmer's trash pile and uh what's even more cool is i went and asked him afterwards i mean do you have any more sheds like you ought to probably take them if you're just gonna throw them away i i haven't thrown any sheds in the trash like that that wasn't me that put it there so the buck must have came up there and just ready to get it off and when i walked up to it i could only see you know part of it i, I knew it was a pretty good shed but i pulled it out and I mean, it's heavy it's the heaviest shed and i think it was right at 80 inches as well this muley right here, pretty cool deal. We, uh, Dad and I each found one of his sheds back to back years. Dad found the right side, I think in 2018, and then I found the right side, or the left side in 2019, just 100 yards apart. And it's, a, I mean, we never had, we don't have muleys on camera, so we're not 100% it's a set, but it's hard to say it's not. So we, as I mentioned, got some mounts from a guy that wanted the antlers cut off and had the free mount, so we, stuck him on there and definitely the biggest muley we've ever seen out there i don't we don't have very many anymore i think he scored right at 185 if i'm right so pretty pretty cool story there pretty cool story on this one this is i've only shot three muleys the one we talked about on the wall over there this one i shot the year before that i want to say this is my second deer ever and uh we knew the muleys were using this alfalfa field quite a bit right at dark so i i was hunting the across the road got down early wasn't seeing much and I was just you know 18 at the time I think would rather chase him down than sit in the stand and wait for him 
and uh, was walking back to the truck, and I seen him come coming across the field probably a quarter mile away, and I knew that he was probably coming right by the truck because that's what they've been doing. And uh, I, I sit there on the behind the hay bales and had my little handheld. We All we used to film with is little handheld recorders just to take him back to camp and show each other what we saw for the night. And uh, I had the hay- the handheld on and he kept coming and coming and he's like 50 yards i'm like okay i'm, I'm gonna shoot him i'm gonna get my bow ready i should have left the camera just laying on the hay bale but i didn't set it down got down drew popped up i mean he was 30 it was perfect he was 30 yards broadside didn't know i was there he stopped on his own eating and i smoked him he died in the field so pretty cool deal on that one as well a couple other whitetail bow kills in there Got the gun safe here. Not much in it other than my coyote gun, my semi-auto bird gun, and my turkey gun. That's all I need guns for. Uh, bow, everything else. Some more. I like to keep the western Kansas sheds separate up here. Some more good match sets. Um, nothing too. This is probably this is one of the cooler ones. These were all laying almost right next to each other. Pretty cool finding them like that. This one had a bunch of velvet left on it still as well but once again some of the some of the beams on these bucks out in western kansas are just these it's just wraps around for days i mean didn't know anything about this deer big brows big beams a couple kickers but cool to find the sheds at least so put those back up there 